It's now time for the Rebirth Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to January 22nd of the year, 2024, when the Nashville Birds were facing off against the Florida Panthers at Bridgestone Arena for the first of two regular season meetings. Head coach Andrew Brunette deploys his lines and defensive pairings in the following way. Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist, Sherwood, Novak, Evangelista, Trennan, Sissons, and Gorionov, Smith, McCarron, and Tomasino. So again, a healthy rotation of healthy scratches and the second, third, and fourth line combinations as well. Yost and Fabra, Luzon and Carey, and McDonough and Shen make up your defensive pairing. So Barry out of the lineup and Fabro back into the lineup. UC Saros gets to start on home ice in net. Ten seconds into this game, it's UC Saros coming with the first save of the game on for Hagee. It is, in fact, the first shot on goal of the game. 41 seconds of the first period. It's Stolarz coming with a save on Philip Forsberg. It's the first shot on goal for the Nashville Predators. At 145 of the first period, it's UC Saros coming with a save on Rodriguez. At 349, Saros a save on Kulikov at 442. Saros continues doing the heavy lifting in the first period with a save on Lundell at 544. The first period, UC Saros again working hard with another save on Rodriguez at the 743 mark of the first period. UC Saros coming with a save on Reinhardt and Florida is simply pushing the Nashville Herders all over the ice at this point in the game. At 929 of the first period, UC Saros coming up with a save on Saskovich at 1052. We see our our first special teams moment of the game when Luce Ryan is off to the box. Two minutes for slashing. The National Predators are going to get the first power play of the game after not having much offense at all to this point. And they would not have much offense at all over the next two minutes. Zero shots on goal. And frankly, not much zone time for setting up at all. Credit to the Florida Panthers for the penalty kill. 12.55 now of the first period. Stolarz coming up with a save on Gorionov at 14 minutes of the first period. UC Saros coming up with a save on Ekblad at 15.57 of the first period. UC Saros back to work again. This time a save on Ekman Larson. 16.14. Preds get another scoring chance. Finally, Stolarz comes up with a save on Philip Borsberg at 17.25. Though UC Saros immediately back to work. Saros comes up with a save on Montour. It would be a long, delayed penalty call on Yakov Trenin. Almost a minute's worth of extra attacker time. But the Florida Panthers Panthers really weren't looking to seize the opportunity here, more like kill off the time and hold off the power play time until the second period. So the penalty call on Trennan would not happen until the 20 minute mark. It would be two minutes for hooking. We would hit the end of the first period. Florida just simply dominant in the first period, out shooting the National Purse. 14 to 4. You see Soros, the only reason the National Purse find themselves in this game. The Florida Panthers start that full two-minute power play on the fresh sheet in the second period, and they are going to work immediately, pouncing all over the Nashville Predators as UC Saros comes with a save on Kachuk, plus his rebound follow-up opportunity. That's just the first of many. Saros then comes up with a save on Reinhardt. Then UC Saros comes with a save on Rodriguez, and one more save on Ekblad before the end of the power play for the Florida Panthers. A dominant, dominant power play, and a dominant power play for UC Soros, making all of those saves. At 4.04 of the second period, Stolarz coming with a save on Luke Evangelista's deflection. A great scoring opportunity at this point. The National Predators' best chance of the game. At 6.07 of the second period, it's Stolarz coming with a save on Forsberg at the 6.56 mark. Stolarz comes with a save on the captain, Roman Yossi at 8.24. Another save on Nyquist. And you can just assume that in between all of these plays, the Florida Panthers are just getting shots on goal against UC Soros. It just comes to a point where you simply just cannot tell every single shot on goal. The Florida Panthers is pounding all over the Nashville Purse in this one. So we are 8.24 into the second period. Now Stolarz comes with a save on Nyquist at the 11.15 mark of the second period. Now just ha past the halfway point of the game. It's Trennan off the box. Two minutes for tripping on a flopping Montour. Reinhardt immediately cashes in on that power play with his 34th goal of the season. Give the Florida Panthers a 1-0 lead. And how it unfolded was off the face-off of the power play to begin it. It was Reinhardt stepping around Sissons at the face-off and then driving to the net with the puck and scoring his 34th of the season. The Florida Panthers break through first 12-04 of the second period. Stars come with a save on Forsberg. Close range here. Another great scoring opportunity for the National Predators in this second period of 12-16. It's Luzon breaking through for the Preds. His fifth goal of the season ties the game up at one apiece. It was a long shot with Sissons setting the screen. 
after a face-off win. So go back to these last two goals. Colton Sissons loses the face-off, gets stepped around and gives up the goal in the defensive zone. And then in the offensive zone, wins the face-off and then goes to the net, sets the screen and helps the Nashville Predators score this goal. Luzon credited with it, his fifth goal of the season. The Preds on the board. Game tied at one apiece. 13-42 of the second period. TC Saros come with a save on Lundell at 14-15 of the second period. TC Saros come with a save on Lusterainen at the 14.58 mark. It's UC Saros coming up with a save on Kachuk at 16.01 of the second period. It's Stolars coming up with a save on Philip Forsberg at 18.10 of the second period. It's going to be Yakov trying off to the box again in this second period. Two minutes for boarding. And this leads to Trenton versus Gatchevich fighting five minutes each after the boarding penalty. Trenton had to respond for that, and they end up having a good scrap. Right there at Bridgestone Arena. While the Florida Panthers are on the power play, they're going to have their own power play negated when Verhage takes a two-minute penalty for cross-checking. That's going to lead to a four-on-four -four scenario. During the four-on-four -four scenario, Stellar's going to save on the captain, Romeo Houston, and has to come out with another save on Nyquist. We hit the end of the second period, and the Florida Panthers are just piling up the shots on goal. 27 shots on goal for the game through two periods. The National Predators are at 16 shots on goal through two periods brief special teams exchange to start the beginning of the third period on the clean sheet nothing would happen right there we hit the 111 mark of the third period back to five on five action as for Hagee picking up his 24th goal of the season making a two to one in favor of the Florida Panthers it was off of the rush he cut to the middle of the ice used the defense as a screen and fired and beat UC Soros for Florida taking a two to one lead again 24th goal of the season for for Hagee. the Predators are picking up a penalty at 412 of the third period too many men on the ice. UC Soros is going to have to go back to work. UC Soros comes to the save on Ekblad. Then UC Soros comes to the save on Lundell. And then Ekblad picks up a penalty. Two minutes for tripping. That was right at the end of the Florida Panthers power play. So just a couple of seconds later, the Preds are on a power play. And Soros coming to the save on Nyquist. Backhand on the goal line. Nyquist just simply did not get enough of it. And this is unfortunately for Nyquist. A couple of games in a row now where he's had great great opportunities and unable to finish right there at the net. Give credit to the goaltender, but Nyquist truly failed to convert on this opportunity on the power play. At 10.42 of the third period, C.C. Saros coming with a save on Ekblad. At the 11.20 mark of the third period, it's Ekman Larson off to the box. Two minutes for tripping on Philip Forsberg. Philip Forsberg trying to get his team back into this game. Still Larson with a save on Novak. All alone in front, had all the time to make all the moves, and the only move he did not make was putting the puck in the net in this instant, all Tommy Novak didn't do was make a play. At the 14.09 mark of the third period, it's Stollars coming with save on Luzon, who was the offensive juggernaut of this game for the Nashville Predators. At 14.50 of the third period, it's Ekblad off the box. Two minutes for interference on the captain, Roman Yossi. The Florida Panthers doing everything they can to let the Nashville Predators back into this game, but the Nashville Predators are only going to be able to generate one good scoring chance over the course of this power play, and Stollars coming with save on Ryan O'Reilly at close range. Back to 5-on-5 five five hockey at the 17-11 mark of the third period. Susie Saros coming up with a save on Kachuk. We hit the empty net scenario at the 17-49 mark of the third period. At 18-21, we find Montour firing the puck 200 full feet for his second goal of the season. It's an empty net goal, of course. The Florida Panthers now lead 3-1. Here in the third period, Andrew Burnett elects to pull UC Soros one more time, try to get back in this game. And at 1941 of the third period, you find Kachuk scoring his 13th goal of the season, a second empty net goal for the Florida Panthers. That makes the score four to one. That's going to be your final. The Florida Panthers out shoot the National Panthers 38 to 28. And what was effectively a two to one game with two empty netters looks like much more of a blowout. And to be honest with you, the score feels a lot more reflective of how the the game itself went. The Nashville Purs were simply run out of their own rink in the first period, found some stability in the middle points of the second period, got themselves on the score sheet, unable, though, to convert and maintain what they were starting to build in the second period, and the power play simply another power outage in this game. UC Soros couldn't do it all by himself, but he sure as hell did try throughout the first period and beyond. The Nashville Purs dropped this one to the Florida Panthers, and they are in a struggle right now, trying to find some goals 
goals anywhere they can, but they're not finding them anywhere right now. That's going to do it for the Rear of the Sports full game recap, analysis, and more coming up next right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. <laughs>